on Mix 106.1. From WMFD's digital broadcast facilities in Mansfield, North Central Ohio's most complete local news coverage starts now. This is Newswatch at 11. Newswatch is brought to you in part by Richland County Children's Services. Safe children today. Build strong families tomorrow. Union employees of Richland County Job and Family Services showed up in large numbers at the opening of the Richland County Fair Sunday, but not to enjoy the many festivities of the fair. Good evening and welcome to Newswatch. I'm Larry Stein. And I'm Bridget Coles. Instead, the agency's employees staged an informational picket to let the public know about their work situation. And union members also were picketing at the Job and Family Services building as well as the County Administration building today. The employees of Ask Me Local 1295 we're at a standstill with the Richland County Commissioners in negotiations of a new contract. And the next step would be to go to fact-finding. One of our other issues is um, performance evaluations. The County Department of Job and Family Services wants to use it um, as a disciplinary tool. We feel that the evaluation should not be used as a disciplinary tool. There is a disciplinary process that they can use. Um, a performance evaluation is to show how you can empower people, give them the tools and skills they need to, to do their job more efficiently or better. And union members are working under an extension of their past contract, which expired June 17th. Taking action to remove the Mansfield City Schools from its rating of being among the worst districts in the state was the topic today at the Richland County Republican Club luncheon. Former Mansfield City Schools personnel director Lowell Smith was the guest speaker at the weekly luncheon at the cafe on Main Street. Smith encouraged those attending to join the community in taking an active role in helping the Mansfield Board of Education get the school district back on track. The most difficult problem our community faces is to get our board to rise up and publicly form a resolution, transparently vote on it, and say our school districts are, are in trouble, we want to lift them out of that, and that is our priority goal. And then direct our superintendent to uh, marshal all resources, personnel, physical plant, equipment, materials, and support that. If we do that, I think we'll rally enough people in Mansfield to be positive and support our schools. Smith says he does not advocate the recall, replacement, or prosecution of board members. He also does not support the firing of Superintendent Dr. Lloyd Martin. Lowell says he wants solutions and wants to help the board improve student achievement. A ribbon-cutting ceremony was held today for a large addition and the renovation of the Big Red Barn at the Richland County Fairgrounds. It actually was a white barn when it was moved to the fairgrounds from a local farm in 1989. More than 200 campers had joined the barn and are able to take advantage now of its many facilities. And we talked about having, uh, putting this addition on this barn, which actually takes the bank barn part of a waiver because it's a T-shaped barn now. We decided that if we're going to do that, we really need to put showers, upgraded full showers and restrooms, plenty of restrooms. We put, while we were doing it, said, let's add a laundry room so that somebody's coming here and their kid falls in the mud or something, they can throw the clothes in the laundry and have clean clothes. Uh, so we have a laundry room. And the fair board asked the county commissioners to borrow a half million dollars for the renovations in addition with the monthly monetary payback. Well says functions at the fairgrounds and the fair itself will then help pay off the barn's debt. A Nevada, Ohio man died Sunday at St. Vincent's Hospital in Toledo following a motorcycle accident Saturday night on Broken Sword Road east of Marion Melmore Road in Crawford County. The sheriff's office says 35-year-old Jeremy Lenhart died from the injuries he received in the accident. The sheriff's office says Lenhart was driving eastbound and his motorcycle traveled off the road into a ditch and overturned. Lenhart and a passenger, Julie Mulholland of Sycamore, were ejected from the motorcycle. She was taken to Bucyrus Community Hospital for treatment of injuries. The accident remains under investigation. And Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in Lexington hosted back-to-back -back motorcycle events the past two weekends. And now the city of Mansfield got in on the action Friday and Saturday with a bike rally. A downpour on Friday may have kept some people away, but those who turned out later on on Saturday enjoyed a festival atmosphere in Mansfield's historic Central Park area. 
streets were cordoned off to allow bikers to show off their riding tricks, and the rally was held to welcome out-of-town visitors to the area as well. Absolutely. Mansfield needs a lot more of these. We need to promote a lot of community events in our, in our area. Just looking around and seeing what's happening. It's a nice, it's a nice event. It should have had more people here. Well, I think it's very nice for Mansfield. I hope it stays down here. And uh, I hope it doesn't rain every year. It seems like every time we have something in downtown Mansfield, it pours. And the bike rally was moved this year to downtown Mansfield from the West Park Shopping Center area on the Miracle Mile because of safety concerns. Co-chair Sam Van Cura says the planning committee took notes on what worked and what didn't in order to make next year's event bigger and better and may turn it into a three-day event. And coming up later on Newswatch, Nick Coser will have a look at our first alert weather forecast. And when we come back, Malabar Farm State Park holds its annual Farm Fun Day. We'll take you there. Childhood should be fun. It sh Welcome back. Area families traveled out to Malabar Farm State Park this past weekend for the annual Farm Fun Day. The event consists of 14 outdoor activities, including a watermelon seed spitting contest, pie eating contest, egg toss, spoon race, get dressed for work race, and a fishing derby. This year, a few new activities were added, including a chalk drawing contest and hang the clothes on the line race. Park employee Lisa Durham says the best part of the event is to watch the families participate in the games together. I think it's funny when the older siblings or uh, parents uh, or even grandparents um, compete with the kids. And some people have come and they've had these um, these long-standing feuds. And some of this gets serious, like the lasso toss and the hay bale throw. I mean, people kind of get serious about this. And, and even spouses um, try to outcompete each other. So I think that's the fun part. And just seeing people out here, it's getting, you know, midsummer. It's usually pretty warm out here. But just seeing families come out and do um, uh, something together. At the close of the contest, first and second place ribbons are given out to children who participated, and a square dance was held in the big barn at night to cap off the event. The G-Spot Bar on Newman Street in Mansfield opened its doors Sunday for a benefit in honor of Michael McCormick, who was murdered last month during an armed robbery. The benefit included a live auction along with a poker run, 50-50 drawings, food, and a variety of entertainment. All the money raised from the event goes towards funeral costs and McCormick's uh, infant son, Damien. I want to, you know, to, to make sure to, to cover all Michael's expenses and then anything left over, I want to make sure that there's money left over to help the baby. Um, you know, I want to help make sure the baby has diapers and things like that and, and then, you know, um, just, just to help make his life just a little easier. That's, that's what Michael was doing and that's what I would like to try to carry on for him. Collection jars have been placed throughout the city of Mansfield for any additional donations. 31-year-old Michael McCormick was shot and killed inside the bar on the early morning of July 24th. No one has been arrested in connection with the murder. Men and women wore their finest glad rags while putting on the Ritz this past weekend at Kingwood Center. The 1920s garden party was Kingwood's contribution to Mansfield's bicentennial celebration. The garden party was first held on the 50th anniversary of the mansion and is now held every other year. This one featured a dinner by Park Avenue Catering, live musical entertainment by the Stardust Band, and this year a special theme. This year uh, we're, it's different from all the others and it has a theme and that particular theme is the, the 20s. It goes along with the, the bicentennial celebration. Everybody's celebrating their history. Of course this wasn't a hundred years ago but uh, it was back when King, the house was first built in 1927, and so um, we thought that would be appropriate theme for the bicentennial year, year. Uh, a nice historical reference. So roaring 20s, so a lot of people are coming in costume. Keeping with the prohibition times, homemade wine was served to guests, and Kingwood Center employees dressed up as historical bicentennial characters and mingled with guests throughout the evening. The Johnny Appleseed Archaeological Society this past weekend held its annual show at Kingwood Center in Mansfield. Kingwood Center's meeting and exhibit halls were filled with visitors learning about archaeological collections shown by people 
from all walks of life. What you'll find here are personal found collections, collections of people that have bought artifacts from others and are just interested in the hobby. These artifacts date from just before contact time with the Indians in the area to prehistorically to 12,000 BC, so there's a tremendous amount of history that you'll find on the tables and a lot of knowledgeable people. And the Johnny Appleseed Archaeology Society meets at Kingwood Center the first Wednesday night of the month up through November and December when the Society gathers the first Saturday of the month. The public is invited to attend its meetings. The U.S. Route 30 entrance ramp from 5th Avenue in Mansfield will close Monday, August 11th for a bridge repair project. U.S. 30 westbound traffic will follow 5th Avenue to U.S. 30, east on U.S. 30 to U.S. Route 42, exit onto U.S. 42 north, follow U.S. 42 north and enter U.S. 30 west. The ramp will reopen August 19th. And the New Jerusalem Progressive Church of God in Christ held its annual street fair this past weekend. It was the 15th year for the event. It featured traditional favorite foods along with several new menu items, a variety of games as well as various entertainers. Not only is the street fair held each summer to give friends and neighbors some family fun, it also was used as a fundraiser for the church. The proceeds from our fundraisers go back into the ministry. And like as of now, school's getting ready to start. We give our school supplies to kids every year. Uh, we go out every Saturday witnessing to people in the community, various things that we do, Bibles, you know, different things to help people that are fellowshipping in the ministry. And the street fair is held each year on the first Saturday of August. Coming up next on News Watch, this is Nick Kozer coming your way with a look at our first alert weather forecast. And at the bottom of the hour, children in need in Ashland County will be the recipients of school supplies this fall thanks to the generosity of local residents. We'll explain why. This is News Watch at 11 from WMFD Television. Miss something? Watch the show again anytime on WMFD.com or watch any episode from the last six months on demand. Just go to WMFD.com and click on Video Room. It affects all of us, so it pays to know the latest high-tech trends. At Tech Close-Up, we spot what's hot and what's not before you hear about it anywhere else. We meet the folks who dream up these incredible innovations that change our lives. We're coast-to-coast, -coast covering the full scope of the high-tech world. Plus, we make it understandable, and more importantly, we make it fun. So stay on top of this fast-paced high-tech world we live in. Don't miss Tech Close-Up. Get the best of both worlds. Access to Ohio's top-ranked public university in a picturesque setting, all at Ohio State Mansfield. In addition to on-site housing and affordable tuition, you have access to over 170 undergraduate majors taught by distinguished faculty in small classes. It's Big Ten quality in a small college setting. It's Ohio State Mansfield. Hey there, how you doing? I'm Nick Koser with a look at the weather as we head into this evening and for the rest of the work week. Well, today things certainly got off to a cloudy start. We were overcast there this morning and most of this afternoon, and I think we will stay that way as we head into tonight and tomorrow, unfortunately. Right now, we'll take you out back, show you a little weather shot of what was happening early this afternoon. And you know, despite some of those gray and cloudy conditions that we did see for the most part, things did clear up a little bit out there as did have some Shots of blue every now and again, but those were pretty few and far in between there. As it was a very cloudy day, as I mentioned, we'll keep the clouds in through the nighttime hours of tonight, and I think for tomorrow as well. Hey, quickly, do have to mention here, we're starting up the good old struble sneeze factor again. It's time to worry about ragweed. So if you have allergies, good news for you today, ragweed is very low. It only came in at a three, and of course, we'll be doing the ragweed count all month long, so keep it right here for all your allergy inquiries. And if you have any more questions, you see the website there at the bottom of the screen, www.strubalallergy.com. 
The great Dr. Robert Struble has you covered. All right, here's the national satellite and radar image, and you can see we do have a little area of weather on the way in from the west, and it does look like we will see a line of showers and thunderstorms start to redevelop there a little bit as it continues to press off to the east. And hey, more showers and thunderstorms then on the way in for the nighttime hours of tonight. Did see some sprinkles early on today, nothing major. I do think more of the heavier stuff is on the way through the night. And by heavy, I mean light to moderate showers, maybe a rumble of thunder. This thing is starting to lose a little bit of steam. Through tomorrow then, we'll keep the chance for some scattered showers in the forecast then as this cold front approaches. I think out ahead of that is where the majority of the activity will be. Very on again, off again. Rain is in the forecast then for us tomorrow. I think by Wednesday then, the cold front will push past. We'll be in the wake of it. Cooler temperatures around the way for the end of the work week. We're talking about uh, temperatures well below average. So I think it'll be kind of a nice change of pace from the above average temperatures we've had here for a good amount of time. All right, we'll take you around the nation, show you those 24-hour travel conditions. And for tonight, maybe battling with some raindrops there is... Showers and thunderstorms are a possibility. Same deal for tomorrow as well. So you may have some soggy commutes coming up here in the next 24 to 48 hours. Here's the regional satellite and radar image. A little bit of rain trying to make its way into the Buckeye State there. Over to the Lab Doppler radar. This will take you outside, show you how things are shaping up this Monday evening. All right, the overnight load tonight at about 65, a 6 in 10 chance for some showers and thunderstorms to come on through. Tomorrow, sunrise a minute before 6.30. For tomorrow, then, almost a carbon copy of today will be in the 80s for that high at 85, a chance of showers and thunderstorms pretty much all day. I think things will start to back off late tomorrow evening, and then for Wednesday, I think we should stay dry for the most part, but still, got to get through tomorrow. Seven-day forecast, then, looks like this Thursday. 81 partly sunny, and there's those cooler temperatures I was telling you about. 75 for Friday, all the way down to 71 on Saturday. That's going to feel rather pleasant Sunday back up to 75 with partly sunny skies on the way. So very untraditional August weather here for the end of the work week and into the weekend. All righty. Well, there's a look at your seven-day forecast, and hey, uh, as I did last year, I am co-hosting the Richland County Fair Show. Of course, the Richland County Fair started up yesterday, and it will be running through the 9th, and of course, we'll show you all the footage from our show right here on good old WMFD-TV every single weeknight at 8 p.m. and every week morning at 9 a.m., so make sure you check out those shows. In tonight's show, my lovely co-host, Danielle Walter, and I covered the Bake-O-Rama that was happening over at the Richland County Fair. And it was a great time, very entertaining. Take a look. I mean, are these foods good? Have you tried any of them? I won't tell if you just maybe took a pinch off of a brownie or licked the top of a cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I won't tell. I didn't do that. I may have some, but I'm trying to watch my figure. Okay. Let me get your opinion. Do, do I need any brownies? <laughs> and beyond. Well, you know, since I'm a nutritionist, I'll tell you, so if you exercise a lot, oh, you know, she's you calling me fat. She's calling me fat on TV. Steal these babies. Huh? <laughs> eh? Huh? Eh? No? I don't know. <laughs> Clearly, she thinks I'm repulsive in every way. <laughs> Brutal honesty. It's always the best policy. So make sure you watch that show. There's more good stuff like that in the uh, program. All right, stick around. Up next, we'll see Jeff Allen with a look at sports. Don't go anywhere. Everybody, let's take a look at sports on this Monday. The second biggest race weekend of the season finished up at Mid Ohio on Sunday with the Wise Coast Superbike 100. And unlike Saturday, this race went off without any delays at all. But the outcome was the same. Six time Superbike champion Matt Maladden closed it within 27 points of Superbike points leader Ben Spees by sweeping both Wise Coast Superbike races at Mid Ohio. Ben Spees was second Sunday, Jamie Hacking third. Maladin's margin of victory in Sunday's race was 6.35 seconds, and the six-time champion led 25 of the race's 26 laps at an average speed of just over 102 miles per hour. For Maladin, it was his fourth straight win. It was a good race for us. Uh, we just um, we had a decent start, and the guys got out there, and I didn't want to let them get in a rhythm, so I pushed past as quick as I could and wanted to set my pace, and we, we made a couple changes this morning to the bike, and... I um, realized that I had a motorcycle that was capable of going a little bit quicker than yesterday. So 
I wanted to get out there and uh, get the most out of it while I could and uh, open up a gap and was able to hold on the end. I was riding as hard as I could and was, you know, not losing huge, but a, you know, a tenth a lap, two tenths a lap and just, you know, riding as hard as I could and kind of made a small mistake and, and uh, you know, then just tried to, you know, run a, a more comfortable pace for me and, and uh, you know, that pace was, was pretty good and we could do that the whole race. I just didn't have the, you know, two, three tenths a lap. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. I rode as hard as I could and the bike worked uh, a little bit better. And yesterday we, we made a, uh, a change to it and that was that was better for the for the end of the race. But I uh, just didn't have those, you know, quick laps in the, in the middle to the, you know, the beginning in the middle of the race. Sunday's race went off without a hitch and lasted about 36 to 40 minutes. Unlike Saturday's race, which saw three red flags and took over two hours to finish with some nasty accidents. One of the accidents was caused by an oil slick after one of the motorcycles blew an engine. The other accident was caused by water dripping off one of the walkway bridges that goes over the track. Speculation was a fan dumped his cooler on the bridge. The 75th Mansfield News Journal Tennis Tournament finished up on Sunday with the Schaub family taking home a lot of the hardware. Ohio Stater Ty Schaub won the men's singles, beating former Lexington teammate and Middle Tennessee State's Alex McCann, 6'3", 6'4". I thought I played pretty well. I had to play a little different. I'm not used to playing on the clay. Um, I've just been playing on hard court a lot. And, but I mean, I know Bones, uh, Alex, the guy I played, you know, I've known him for a long time and his style and stuff like that. So when I play him, I have to switch, switch my game up a little bit and try to come to the net a lot more. I don't really want to stay back at the baseline and just rally with him. But you know, I played pretty well. I served really well. And I thought uh, I won, won a lot of the big points. So I thought that was kind of the, the difference in the match. And like brother, like sister, as Melissa Schaub also won the women's singles, defeating her younger sister, Courtney Schaub, 6-0, 6 You know, I've won it a few times prior to this, but every time, every time coming back is, is amazing, you know, and you grow up and you watch all these people like, like Bonnie here, you know, she won it a few times, and, you know, you watch these adults playing growing up, so, so to be able to be one of those people and, and be with so many great players that have won this tournament before, um, you know, it definitely, it definitely is a dream come true. Now, Melissa also teamed with her sister Courtney Schaub to win the women's doubles final. Well, preseason pro football is back, and the Hall of Fame game kicked it off last night in Canton, Ohio. And I know you'll rest easy now that Brett Favre has decided to return to Green Bay. Preseason football on the field last night. The NFL's kickoff to the preseason. The Hall of Fame game as Washington quarterback Colt Brennan threw two touchdown passes to lead the Redskins to a 30-16 win over the Indianapolis Colts. And that gave their new coach Jim Mora a pleasant debut. However, Peyton Manning did not play for Indy. Well, Brett Favre is back, and I know that makes your life better. The NFL will reinstate the quarterback today, and Favre is expected to report to camp right away. The team says it will have an open competition for the starting quarterback position between Favre and Aaron Rodgers. And in golf at the Bridgestone Invitational, V.J. Singh shot a 2-under 68 Sunday to finish 10-under for the tournament to win his first World Golf Championship event. I wonder if the people in Green Bay really have that much to worry about. They're all hepped up about Brett Favre. Well, the Browns will play the first of four preseason games on Thursday night against the New York Jets in Cleveland. Game time is 7.30. Here we go. That is a look at sports on a Monday. And welcome back to Newswatch. I'm Megan Mahoney sitting in for Nick Coaster this week with our Adopt-A-Pet segment. And I am here with Mim. He is a four-year-old boy. Um, as you can see, I think he's actually completely black. He um, is the sweetest thing right now. He just won't stop purring. So I guess he likes to uh, climb on shoulders and uh, sit there for a while. So if you like a lap cat or a shoulder cat, I guess I should say, uh, he'd be your pick. And uh, his old owner had to, she moved and she couldn't take him with her, but uh, he is neutered, um, already checked for the feline leukemia, so he is good to go. Um, if you are interested in Mim, like I said, he is adorable. Um, you can go ahead and call the um, adoption center at the Humane Society at 419-774-5892. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in Mim or anybody, um, maybe a dog or another cat or anybody, just go ahead and give them the call. 
But uh, again, this is Mim, and uh, he's a sweetie, like I said, just keeps on purring. And uh, we'll be back with more in a little bit. Yes, somewhere there's a woman who dreams about hooking. And we welcome you back. The school year hasn't started yet, but a yellow school bus came for a pickup this past weekend at the Walmart store in Ashland. The United Way of Ashland County sponsored an event called Stuff the Bus. People had the opportunity to donate school supplies for area children who can't afford to purchase them. The United Way of Ashland County Executive Director, Ab Duvall, says the agency decided to hold the fundraiser in conjunction with Walmart after they found out about the growing need. South of Us is really a, a national uh, initiative by United Way of America. I thought it was an excellent idea, so this is the first time we've tried it here in Ashland County, and uh, no doubt by uh, what's happened this morning, it's going to be a very successful event. The great thing about having it here at Walmart is all of their school supplies are on sale right now, and you can get a notebook for as cheap as five cents and a stick of glue or a folder for as cheap as 22 cents. So if you were willing to just give like five dollars, it really will go a long way to um, helping stuff the bus for the kids. And another Stuff the Bus event will take place August 9th from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Along with school supplies, monetary donations are also welcome. Nearly 600 people showed up at the Savannah Volunteer Fire Company in Ashland County for a finger licking good time this past weekend as the department held its annual chicken barbecue. Along with benefiting the fire company, a portion of the money raised went to a young Savannah girl battling cancer. This year we really didn't earmark other than we did have a 50-50 uh, drawing for a local uh, child that's uh, four years old that's got uh, cancer and uh, having a real hard time of it. And so we did the 50-50 in a, in a donation uh, container for that. Uh, the other proce proceeds will go towards uh, buying equipment for the EMS service and, and for the fire service, turnout gear and, and items like that. A car show at the dinner featured more than 70 cars and trucks. The event also had live musical entertainment by the Clear Creek Revival Band. Well, it wasn't long after the chicken barbecue had ended that the Savannah Volunteer Fire Department was called into action. The department responded to an early Sunday morning fire which destroyed a log cabin and sent an unidentified woman to Ashland Samaritan Hospital for treatment of smoke inhalation. Firefighters responded around 2.45 a.m. Sunday to the home at 1255 Township Road 608. Upon their arrival, the home was fully engulfed in flames and a woman was found standing outside. The log cabin was a total loss. The firefighters worked to keep the fire from spreading to several outbuildings nearby. Mutual aid was provided by the Nankin and Ruggles Troy Fire Departments. The cause of the fire in Savannah remains under investigation. Ontario Service Safety Director Charles Awe says the railroad underpass located on Park Avenue West in Ontario will be closed from Chambers Road to State Route 309 beginning Monday, August 11th. The underpass will be closed for 21 days for road reconstruction and resurfacing. And we're learning more about the man federal officials say was at the center of the anthrax letter case. A former therapist says Bruce Ivings uh, talked about going on a killing spree since he was about to be indicted in capital murder charges. Ivings killed himself last week as the FBI closed in. As Brianna Keeler tells us, this all comes as more evidence against him emerges. CNN has learned from sources familiar with the investigation that there is DNA evidence linking the anthrax used in the 2001 mailings to a flask used in Bruce Ivan's Army Laboratory. We've also learned more about Ivan's troubling behavior. As federal prosecutors grew closer to charging Bruce Ivins in connection with the anthrax attacks, his therapist, Jean Dooley, told a Maryland judge in late July that she was scared to death of Ivins and sought a temporary restraining order against him. In court tapes obtained by the New York Times, Dooley described a murder plot the troubled scientist laid out during a group therapy session. That he had bought a bulletproof vest, had obtained a gun, um, a very detailed plan to um, kill his co-workers, that he was going to take everybody out with him. 
After that therapy session, Dooley started the process to have Ivan's involuntarily committed to a high security mental health facility. But many people are skeptical the FBI has got it right this time, especially after repeated mistakes throughout the seven year investigation. Jeffrey Adamovich, a former bacteriology chief who worked with Ivan's for 12 years at Fort Dietrich's biodefense lab, says it would have been nearly impossible for Ivan's to pull off the attacks. The labs were not equipped, for instance, with a lot of the equipment that would have been required to, to supposedly dry this material down and create the, uh, the highly refined state that it was in. Sources familiar with the investigation say authorities may publicly release their evidence against Ivans as soon as this week and then go ahead and close the case. According to those sources, that would happen after a federal judge unseals grand jury evidence and officials brief the families of those who were killed and injured in the 2001 attacks. And stay tuned. Tonight's Health Watch report with Megan Mahoney is coming up next on Newswatch. Have a news tip? Call WMFD's Newsline at 529-NEWS or from your Altel cell phone at Star News. And welcome back to News Watch. As the Olympic Games are set to get underway in Beijing, China, there is a concern about air pollution levels in that city. Not only for the athletes who will compete, but for the hundreds of thousands of fans who will be watching. Being exposed to high levels of air pollution can cause all sorts of breathing problems. And now scientists say it can impact your health as well. As Clark Powell shows us, for the first time, researchers have made a disturbing link between high levels of air pollution and high blood pressure. Having lost his mother, father, and a brother to heart disease, Ron Ellis does whatever he can to stay active. That usually means going outside to either exercise or work on his lawn. I like being out in the heat because you do get a good workout and you feel like when you are doing something actively, you're, you're sweating, your body's responding, you feel good when you're done. But a new study shows that despite the exercise Ron may be getting outside, the mere fact that he is outside could be causing him problems. For the first time ever, scientists at Ohio State University Medical Center have shown that exposure to high levels of air pollution can lead to high blood pressure. In lab tests here, they exposed rats to the type of air pollution many of us breathe every day and saw blood pressure rates jump 25 percent. The worst part is the air pollution levels in this study were nowhere near the levels you find in places like China. The levels that these animals were exposed to were well below, approximately four, four to, two to four fold below what you would see in uh, a city like Beijing. It was Dr. Sanjay Rajakapalan and his team that made the discovery. They say air pollution levels in cities like New York can easily aggravate your heart, but lower levels in the suburbs can affect it too, which could be especially dangerous for people like Ron who have a strong family history and are already at risk. If you were predisposed uh, to developing high blood pressure and you were exposed to chronic levels of air pollution, um, you know, you would develop high blood pressure. It's an important finding, researchers say, as they work to clear the air on just what kind of dangers air pollution can pose. At Ohio State University Medical Center, this is Clark Powell reporting. And to further their study, researchers from Ohio State are gathering more data in China. During the Olympics, the Chinese government is shutting down many factories and pulling half the cars off the road to cut down on air pollution. Researchers want to stay there and see just how much the blood pressure goes up in Chinese residents after life returns to normal and pollution levels go back up. Well, coming up in a moment, Nick Costa will have another look at your first third weather forecast. Hey there, how are you doing? And welcome back to Newswatch. I'm Nick Kosler with a look at the weather. As we head into this work week, well, hey, the first full week of August 2008 got off to a little bit of a cloudy start today. It was certainly overcast this morning. And this afternoon, saw a little bit of rain, too, and more of that is on the way as we head into tonight and for our Tuesday tomorrow. So things getting off to a soggy start. We'll take you outside, show you how things were shaping up right outside the WMFD studios. And there you have a beautiful field of weeds very nice they're all flying around in the breeze there as we had winds coming in from the south and east between 10 and 15 miles an hour helped warm us up to about 80 degrees of course it was overcast though a little humid too so you know not the greatest of august days but we'll have to bear with it here as i think better weather is on the way a little unseasonable weather too as i think things are really going to cool down here 
for the end of the work week. All right, hey, we'll take over to the regional satellite and radar image. Started off with a decent amount of cloud coverage overhead. Did see every once in a while a little bit of blue sky pop through, but for the most part, we stayed overcast today as we did see some light showers in the Ontario area early on today, and I'm sure many of you saw some rain as well through tonight. More of that is on the way. We're dealing with a mid-latitude cyclone here. Warm front out, out to the front, cold front trailing behind in an area of low pressure kind of holding both together. That's going to put scattered showers and thunderstorms in the forecast through tonight, overnight, and into tomorrow as well, with I think tomorrow going to look a lot like it did out there today. A mostly cloudy kind of day will top out in the low to mid 80s and the chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms will be with us pretty much all day long. I think things may begin to scale back by tomorrow evening as everything pushes off to our east. Once this cold front comes on through, things are really going to scale back in terms of temperature. And like I mentioned, a pretty big cool down is on the way, especially for this time of the year. So things will get interesting here. Take around the nation and show you what was happening. Today we topped out at 80, 74 there in Chicago. And 81 in Sioux Falls, Kansas City doing even better at 94. Dallas again sizzling, 101. Over to the live Doppler radar, this will take you outside, show you how things are shaping up in your neighborhood as we speak. Tonight's overnight low is 65, a good chance for some showers and thunderstorms into tomorrow then. I think we will be getting wet yet again. That high, right around 85, another low right at 65. The seven day forecast then looks like this may see a lingering shower on Wednesday. Otherwise, I think it'll be a partly sunny day, a little cooler, 81. Same deal for Thursday with more sun than clouds by Friday down to 75. Saturday, a 71. Haven't seen a 71 in a good while. So that'll be a, a pleasant change. Sunday, middle 70s again and partly sunny skies. And make sure you head over to our website. It is WMFT.com. For all the latest in local news, weather, and sports, we'll keep you covered with the most up-to-the-minute stories here around our area. And as I mentioned in the first weather segment, I am co-hosting the Richland County Fair Show, which you can see here on WMFD. As you probably know, the Richland County Fair started up yesterday, and it'll be running through the 9th. Lots of good stuff out there. Make sure you head over there if you get a chance. The food, the rides, all the uh, fair atmosphere is back. And on tonight's show, which I am co-hosting all week uh, with Danielle Walter, on tonight's show, we visited the bake o -Rama at the Richland County Fairgrounds. Had a great time. They're auctioning food off to make money for the fair. And here's a little clip of the show tonight. Here's a question. Have you ever auctioned Pop-Tarts? <laughs> Pop-Tarts? No, because I, I just submitted my family recipe. I put some Pop-Tarts on the table, and I was hoping you, were, you could auction them off. Or if you wanted to, I could auction them off. I think I'm pretty good. Are you? I All think right, so. We'll let you do it. Okay. All right, we'll go for a 10. Do I hear a 10? 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 Man, I got no idea what I'm doing right now. I feel so weird. I got no idea. Can somebody bid real quick, please? 999, 999, 998. I don't even yeah. know what's going on. 999? All right. 999, 999, 10. Do I hear a 10? Can I get a 10? Can I get a 10? 10, 10, 10, 10? I will go a little lower. Hey! <laughs> Trust me, I'll stick to my day job. So make sure you watch those shows, the Richland County Fair Show, every week uh, day, uh, every week night, I should say, at um, 8 p.m. and then every week morning at 9 a.m. So tune in, it'll be a good time. All right, stick around. Up next, Larry Stein, we'll have a look at your business. Here's a look now at business news on a Monday. The nation's employers continue to put jobs on the chopping block at a steep rate as the economy struggles, according to a new report. Challenger Gray and Christmas, an outplacement consultancy firm, said today planned job cuts announced by employers in July jumped 26% to 103,312 from 81,755 announced in June. That's up 141% from a year ago when employers announced planned job cuts totaling 42,897. Personal income rose slightly in June after surging the previous month on the first wave of economic stimulus checks. The government also reported today the Commerce Department said individual income increased by 0.1% in June. Personal spending in June increased by 0.6%, which was more than the half percent increase economists polled expected. 
However, the spending jump was driven by inflation. Individual spending, when adjusted for inflation, actually fell by 0.2 percent, following a 0.3 percent increase in May. Well, a super jumbo double-decker jet has made its first commercial U.S. landing at the JFK International Airport in New York. More than 500 passengers and crew arrived on the jumbo jet from Dubai. The uh, Airbus A380 is billed as the world's largest passenger aircraft. The 239-foot long jet can seat 555 passengers in typical three-class sections or 853 passengers in economy. Its wings are as long as football fields. Verizon's Communications Incorporated is back in talks with two unions about new labor contracts for 65,000 workers. The Communications Workers of America, the largest of the unions, said negotiations had resumed today. Verizon's contracts with the CWA and the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers were set to expire Saturday at midnight. Major bargaining issues include health care coverage, wages, and union representation for new jobs. And finally, that trip to Disney World just got more expensive. One-day ticket prices to Disney parks in the United States went up as much as $4 today. At Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida, tickets for those 10 and older are now $75, bucks, and tickets for kids ages 3 to 9 go from $60 to $63 apiece. That's a look at business news to start off the work week. Now let's check today's closing quotations from Wall Street for stocks of local interest. Watching the 11 o'clock news from North Central Ohio's News Leader. Meet. Hey there, and welcome back to News Watchers. A quick look at the weather forecast again as you head into this evening. For tonight, showers and thunderstorms a possibility. It looks like chances for rain are still there as we head into tomorrow, and maybe a lingering shower for Wednesday. Otherwise, I think we'll start to clear up. Thursday, Friday look okay with some sunshine, but look at that a big dip in temperatures on Friday, 75. Looking past that, I think we'll be at about a 71 on Saturday, so cooler weather is on the way. All right, thanks for uh, joining us here, and make sure you stick around. The news continues right here on WMFD-TV. Anchors Hair by Hair Systems 2 Hair and Nails, 1494 Park Avenue West, Mansfield. This is WMFD DT, Channel 68 in Mansfield, America's first independent digital television station.